Hey guys, it's Roscoe on the Space Couch today. I've got episode two of The Expanse to review. And it's called The Big Empty. Now, it opens up where the last episode ended, you know, with the uh, Holden and his crew in that shuttle stranded in the middle of nowhere, an incoming debris field likely to destroy them, and little or no chance of rescue. Now, I thought the segments that focused on Holden and the crew had some excellent character building. Obviously, first episode was very plot and exposition heavy as pilots are, but I mean, it really showed their characters very well. I mean, Naomi takes charge, Holden is an ass, and I've forgotten how much I enjoy hating Holden exactly half of the time. I enjoy liking Holden the other half of the time. I tell you what, um, Amos is also he's very scary in the TV show, like he is in the books, you know. Well, Alex, of course, he was just completely out of it. And um, Shed Garvey was just whining and complaining the whole time. Not that different from Holden, who, when he's not being noble and heroic, is also a whiner. Now, there's one thing, because um, it kind of opens with a little bit of a flashback, Holden and his girl, I think it's Arde, I can't remember her name, where, is she just about to tell him she's pregnant before the cat gets destroyed? It's very likely, it was certainly would give him much more motivation, I guess. And that sense of loss was really palpable, I think, that he felt after her death. And it's like, I have to tell you something. Exactly, I would be terrible. Now, so, they're stranded in deep space, and they've got to fix the comms antenna. <laughs> the ship's hold, so essentially they've got to go outside in their pressure suits, but because I think one of the airlocks is broken, the others inside the ship have also got to wear their pressure suits, and there's no atmosphere. It's like, yeah, anything that can go wrong will go wrong. That's very much the case in, what was that I said? In, just another day in the expanse, you know. Anything that can go wrong will go wrong. And it's funny because um, Naomi at that point, she's very much more so the leader of their team than Holden, who is nominally now their captain. It's funny, uh, Amos, when they're outside, him and Holden, trying to fix the <laughs> antenna, says, you know, I could kill you, and it wouldn't mean anything to me. The only reason I don't is because Naomi wouldn't like it. Can you pass me that hammer? <laughs> <laughs> Very well done. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Those characters are really coming into their own now. So, they do, of course, eventually manage to get that antenna fixed. The time on the ritual of, in the end, they just kick it hard enough and it comes back online. Now, um, they do, of course, immediately get picked up <laughs> by a Martian Navy warship, the Donager. Um, thinking, of course, they're all about to get killed, Holden sends off a message by saying, we didn't kill it, um, someone attacked the can, all that sort of stuff, you know. And he nearly gets himself killed by his own crew in that process, but I had forgotten from the books, so I might not even be in it, but like... Martian warship approaching at high speed is going to take you out, you expect. You're sending your rescue mission and everyone is terrified that you're just going to make it worse. You're going to cause even more problems. It's funny because I think Amos even says something along the lines of, shall I waste him now? <laughs> very well done. You've got to be very careful of Amos. He will waste you at a moment's notice. So, obviously, they then do get boarded and arrested by the Martians. Um, back on Ceres, however, the destruction of the cat has led to uh, increased water shortages and ration. That obviously then leads to people having like, showers, all sorts of like riot -y type stuff, you know, like what is important on a world that has none. Take that away, conditions collapse, and there's always going to be people preying on the weak or trying to get around the system. One of the events this time is Holden just got, and it's just kids who are doing it, so it doesn't really take too much action against them. They've essentially been um, stealing water. Uh, yeah, I know that's a very serious offence, really, but I mean, they're kids and they're just desperate. So he kind of lets them go. Um, it, I did think it they've done an excellent job, especially with that segment about the water sources, of really showing how multi-layered and faceted life on Ceres and the other planets when we see them really is. They've done an excellent job, I think, of showing these societies how they really would be. Now, back in New York, Avasaral is interrogating um, that belter. They're yeah, using gravity torch, you know, he's chained up against the wall. She gets busted by her boss, so he's essentially, <laughs> always reminds me of a back to tank, you know, like, so he's in like a tank of water where obviously the water is supporting his weight, the gravity isn't 
afflicting them so much. It was a very interesting conversation he and Avasarala had. She's very much like, I don't want to do this to you. Just tell me why do you have this tech? Where did you get it from? And of course he's not giving anything away. It's a very interesting kind of standoff between them in that it did seem like they understood each other very well. Um, and there was nothing personal in it, you know, it's just how things are. Um, she is worried, Avasarala, about this missing ste stealth, or this stealth tech that the guy had. It's like, it's going to upset the balance. Earth doesn't really have the resources to um, afford that kind of tech. Mars does. If Mars and the Bell are aligning, that is bad news for Earth. Of course, that's what the people in the background would very much like to think everyone's happy that Mars and the Belt are aligned when of course we know that they aren't. Now, in episode 8, I do feel that the characters have now fully settled into those roles and they are those people. Even more so than the first episode, like I said, exposition heavy sometimes, getting the plot set up, you know, that's done now, we're into the story and they're all utterly believable thoroughly enjoying it as it goes along you know um for me like i said episode one i thoroughly enjoyed it but it was a necessary chore if you know what i mean now it's all well it's all downhill for the people in the expanse of course um but yes i mean it's all the work of episode one that has now paid off in episode two and we're all completely invested emotionally in those new characters you know Episode 3 is fittingly called Remember the Cant, and I shall be reviewing that for you in due course. I hope you enjoyed my review of the second episode of The Expanse. It's thoroughly enjoyable, and it's kind of following the books, but it's been such a while since I read the books, I don't really remember what they've changed and what they haven't, you know. So anyway, please subscribe to my channel if you enjoyed this content. Leave me a comment or a suggestion for an upcoming topic, um, or anything you'd like to see discussed, or like the video.